hands on it. That will be it. They've defended their title. They are still the champions. And the first in a united competition since 9293. Well, hello, Roosters fans, and welcome to this week's Roosters Radio. A game of milestones down there at Canberra, the grand final replay. We were waiting to see in store what coach Ricky Stewart had up his sleeve against the might of Trent Robinson and our mighty Chooks. Well, Sonny Bill got on the field. Jay Moz played his 300th, and it was a tetathon as he gave a lesson to those Vikings down there in Canberra. Well, I can safely say, boys, Led by Freddie Lussick at dummy half. What a performance for this young standout, Silky. What a performance from our forwards. We were powerhouse. Luke Keary, well, he looked a little ginger protecting the ribs, but didn't he play well with injury? What a great week to be a Rooster. Rooster's grand final replay, and we got the chocolates. 18-6. A great performance from our boys, Silky. You couldn't have asked for more. See where up front. Manu in the centres was outstanding again, but Teddy, wow. What a performance. What a tetathon. What a lesson in fullback play. More metres than a front rower. He was just amazing at his dynamic best. Well, in the words of the Rooster stat man, he was the stat man of the week, Bush. Two tries, two line breaks, 26 runs, a mammoth 227 metres, 15 tackle breaks, seven tackles, two kicks diffused. It was an unbelievable performance by the man at the back. Also, as you rightfully said, young Freddie Lussick debuting in the number nine. I thought he was fantastic there at dummy half uh, and had a mammoth 66 tackles as well. But as you rightfully said, there was plenty of great performances on the field that night. Daniel Tupu, that kick from uh, young Kyle Flanagan to the corner, he never looked like dropping. I think we declared it at your house, Bush. When we were watching the footy, I said, here comes a try and bang, try in the corner. I thought Kyle Flanagan was exceptional, particularly his defence and his kicking game. But I think the comment of the night, as we said, Bush, there on Saturday is the defence is coming back, things are looking good. And as Cooper Cronk rightfully said post-match, the Raiders, well, they didn't really look like scoring, did they? Well, Silky, I think it's got to be said, the Raiders aren't a one-man team. They're a great side. You know, you've got White in there. You know, they've got a good forward pack. Bateman, the Englishman, looks like he's pretty sharp. Captain Croker is always, you know, uh, one to one to mention. He's a great footballer. So right across the park, they're dangerous. But I will say one thing. We noticed a difference when Big Papa went off. Absolutely. And I've got to tell you, you realise what a good player he is. And, you know, I think from a Roosters perspective, we were anticipating Sonny Bill coming on. We didn't know he was going to come on as a middle. We didn't know what Rob, uh, Coach Robbo had up his sleeve. And, uh, you know, the fans out there were salivating. The Canberra fans, I think, and rugby league fans around the world were looking forward to his uh, debut for this year in his return game for the Roosters. How would you see it? Look, I just thought it was a really good litmus test for our boys. I was at the game earlier this year uh, when we came back from COVID and the Raiders really stuck it to us that night on a miserable Thursday night at the SCG. But I thought our boys would get up for this game. And, you know, with the inclusion of Boyd, Luke Keary, and obviously Daniel Tupu and a few of the other players that were returning from injury, it was a very important game. You know, we're looking to cement ourselves in the top four. Uh, so there's plenty to play for, notwithstanding we've got a, a pretty difficult run home, all, or, you know, pretty much top four sides. So uh, these matches leading into the semis are vitally important. So we, we want to get on a bit of a winning streak. And, uh, you know, we did that on Saturday night. Yeah, mate, I think so. And I think, you know, those milestone games, Coach Robinson really gets our players up for a little bit like what you hear about uh, Bill Emmy in Melbourne. And to have Jay Moz run out for his 300 with his family there, you saw afterwards, great celebration. I felt terrible for him. He couldn't go over and kiss his beautiful yeah, young family. Yeah, it was quite family. sad, that, wasn't it? Just it, having that lack of con- – that, not being able to have that contact, which really brings home that whole COVID bubble, I thought. It does. And, you know, just not just to bring home the COVID bubble, mate, but it brings home the sacrifices that uh, our mighty men are playing and, and going through, I guess. And when you see a man – Get that he got the game ball. It was a nice speech by, uh, you know, the NRL CEO. And, and uh, you know, Jay Moz replied beautifully, like, you know, typical great man just talking about the Raiders and his own teammates. I, I loved how he uh, he gave his mum a nice mention about all the, the, the driving to and from training and the sacrifices that the family has made for both him and brother Brett to uh, be so successful in rugby league. It was, a, it was a beautiful speech. Yeah, it was a really nice speech. And it was great for the – you could see how happy the team was to celebrate. The other thing of note to celebrate and another humble human being – 
SBW, he is an enigma. He's amazing at our club. He's a world-class athlete. But for him, for him to spend the 13 minutes on the field that he did showed the type of athlete he is. It also showed how quick the game's gotten. And oh, he, yeah. He said it afterwards. One little moment was when he went off the field and you saw him and Angus Crichton just embrace like that actually won something. And I think it was just great for the boys to to rally around. And I think he just showed how much class and grace and poise he has when he come off and they asked him all about him and all he wanted to do was shine the torch on Jay Moz's 300th game. And I think that just goes the humility of a great champion. Also, I just want to give him a mention, Angus Crichton. I thought he was devastating. Uh, he was really dangerous on that right side. And, uh, you know, obviously another one of the players returning back. It's great signs for our club to see these players coming back at the right end of the season. And, you know, having a, a four or five week break as he's had to just pick up where he left off. It's good news for Roosters fans. I think that's the way that their coach made. I think that Coach Robertson has our team in competitive positions. And I think everyone, have a look at, you know, we lose Jake Friend. When you tell a team, any team that loses Jake Friend for the weekend is going to do it tough. But I've got to give a rap to uh, to young Lussick. Well, I mean, he just... Who would have picked 66 tackles? Man, he was unbelievable. Yeah. 66 tackles. And the service had a dummy yep. half. He was fast. He was nippy. He, he may just... have lost his kicking licence. He may have lost his kicking uh, license off Coach Robinson. Be interesting to see. I don't know if he'll lose his kicking license, but he might be putting his cue in the <laughs> rack for the rest of the season and and be told what to do and when to do it. But uh, mate, he just supported so well. He's tough for just he's not you know he's a young man. He's only uh, only coming into his you know third or fourth game, and uh, you know it was just a great all round performance. Yeah, just on radio hubs, Luke Carey Bush. You saw at half time they were strapping his ribs. Still a bit ginger there, but I thought as the game progressed. He started touching the ball. So I think he must have started to get a feel for the game, which uh, which once again is good news for Roosters fans. Well, they talk about these amazing feats of heroism and players playing with injury and Joey Johns with the punctured lung in 97, Johnny Sattler with the broken jaw, Sam Burgess the broken sheep. Sean bone. Kenny Dow broken jaw. Sean Kenny Dow broken jaw. And then you see Luke Keery, mate, playing with broken ribs in the hardest game in the world. I mean, Sonny Bill spent 13 months in the field, was sucking in the big ones. I mean, Luke Keery would have been looking at that going, geez, I don't want to do that again. And, you know, he just showed a great account of himself, as you'd expect. Mate, Bordy Cordner, once again outstanding. Great captain's knock. I thought he had some nice touches, but some brilliant defence. When we needed it, he picked up Dinamis yeah, Louie yeah. just on that. You know, I just thought, oh, wow, thanks, Boyd. And that inspires the rest of the team. So as you rightfully said, Silky, at the beginning of the podcast, getting these players back at the right time of year, we've had a, a bit of a run of injury, but I think it just shows the, the class that, that Coach Robinson has for our teams and the level and standard. Because when you can bring in a Freddie Lussick, you can bring in a replacement for Angus Crichton. Lindsay Collins, come on. Lindsay had a great game. Mate. Yeah. Lindsay, you know, Lindsay's got a drop ball in his game and we know that and the fans all say it. Uh, but I've got to tell you, no mistakes there on Saturday mistake night. Mistake-free football, and that's we know that's going to come. It happened to all of them. We spoke to Lindsay a couple of weeks ago, and I declared here on this podcast that I think he's a boulder for the Queensland side. I know Gordon Tallis has picked his team, and uh, Lindsay Collins in the starting side for Queensland. Wow, that's great. And you know what? Having an origin campaign, you know what it does to all of them. We saw yeah. it's done to the likes of Dylan Napper and other players over the years for the Roosters, and they come back different men. So it's exciting for us. And I think having origin at the end of the year, well, you know, we talked about yeah. it ourselves on Saturday night. I think it's the new format that if the NRL is going to consider it long term, it's going to help all clubs. But on that point, would you still have a break? I think one thing that we've learned from the from the COVID break is due to the injuries and the the speediness of the game is the fact that the players themselves do need a break. So something for the NRL power brokers to think about over the off season. Yeah, for sure, Silky. I think that uh, they'll see the best way to look after the players. I think you know there's so much about contact and speed of the game and how much footy they're playing. Again, I keep referring to it. You only saw. You know, on the weekend, how hard the contact is when a bloke like Josh Papali goes down with a shoulder injury, and you could see Sonny Bill getting used to the game. I know he had a lot of uh, nervous energy there. From you know, he was chasing everything that moved, a couple of strong carries, but blowing after 13 minutes. So I think if the NRL looks at it solidly, they're going to come back and maybe change the uh, the rules around Origin and, and play it at the end of the year. You're on Roosters Radio, right and when we come back, the hooker himself, Freddie Lussick. Well, Roosters fans, as promised, the names keep on coming. Or this time, it's one of our young stars. He was the winner of the Harry Phipps Rising Star Award at the Jack Gibson Awards nights last year. And would you please welcome on debut on Roosters Radio and only recently on debut in our amazing first grade squad, Freddie Lussick. Freddie, what a, what a standout performance it was last week. And welcome to Roosters Radio. Yeah, thanks, guys, for having me. Yeah, last week was obviously um, a big step up for me in my early career. Obviously, travelling down to Canberra and playing a a solid team like them, it was a big ask. Yeah, the boys played really well and we got the job done. Freddie, just for our Roosters fans, you know, you uh, you come from a rugby league family and you've come from the Northern Beaches, but you seem to have slid 
into that number nine jersey just like it was uh, Jake Friend on a 12-week challenge. Can you tell us a bit about how that came about? Yeah, obviously, um, Jake Friend, he's a classy player and all pre-season, I've just sort of been trying to pick his brain and alongside all the other players there. It's such high-quality um, team. And then been working hard all pre-season and then obviously got my chance a few weeks ago and I've just tried to not let it slip. Freddie, I want to go back a little bit further. I want to talk about Growing up on the Northern Beaches, now uh, you've got two older brothers, Joey and Darcy, both have played rugby league at the highest level and your old man was a footballer. What was it like in the backyard as, as, as the youngest of three boys? You, they must have served it up to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was getting pushed around a fair bit. There wasn't uh, much fighting back with me. I was the um, youngest child. But, yeah, looking up to my two brothers playing, it sort of drove me a lot more wanting to play in the NRL. And, yeah, it's, it's finally here. It's come. So it's good. And you made 66 tackles on the weekend. I dare say you must have done a fair bit of tackling in the backyard too. Yeah, a lot of tackling in the backyard. I was actually, during the game, I thought, am I unfit or have I just made a lot of tackles? And someone told me after the game the amount of tackles I made, and I was like, oh, makes sense now. Did any of your brothers, uh, any of your family members give you a call? Obviously, you're three games into what's going to be a long career, but it was your first game starting at number nine. Any advice from any of your, your siblings? Probably just more a few laughs, no real serious advice. They sort of just let me be, which is probably a good thing, not trying to hammer me with too many things to try to do. They obviously trust me and mostly at a good club now and they prepare me right, which definitely helps. In uh, 2013, the Roosters played Manly in the grand final. You would have been 12 turning 13 or just turned 13. Were you a Manly fan back then? Yeah, I was actually. I was at that game. I think my brother might have been an ex man that game, but been a Manly fan growing up my whole life. And then obviously I've went to Roosters, come SG Ball, and now I'm a Roosters fan. Now, there's a bloke that would have broke your heart that night by the name of SBW, and uh, he broke the heart of Manly fans, but he certainly delighted the Roosters. How does it feel for, to go from 13 watching one of the megastars of our game, and all of a sudden you're running on the football field, you're in the run-on side, and he's coming off the bench? When I obviously heard the news that he was coming to the Roosters, I was a bit shocked. And then when he walked into training, I was sort of just kind of speechless. The first day, I sort of just watched him prepare, train, you know, the way he treated himself. Now it's sort of it's come a bit normal now that he's there. And now I'm just going to try to stay professional and get along with it. As a young player, I mean, when you see someone like Sonny Bill, who is an enigma of our game, done so much for our club. When you see him prepare, what are what are some of the things that you might have picked up and thought, wow, is, is that how the pros do it? You know, I'm going to put that into my routine. Yeah, it's, um, it's not just Sonny as well. There's a whole heap of players. You've got Jared, you've got Brand, yep. there's both the Morris boys. There's such a high quality class of players that are at the club now. And I just sort of just try to sit back and try to pick all their brains and new ways to obviously benefit my game. Freddie, what about your own preparation? Can you just talk our fans through a little bit of how you prepare for a first grade game and give us just a little insight into some of the things you might do? Have you got any? Uh... Yeah, I sort of, I wake up pretty early around sort of six o'clock. I like to uh, go down for a quick swim and then have a good brekkie and then probably stretch and then probably have a try, get to sleep in during the day somewhere and then get ready for the game. Now, Freddie, at the start of the year, you would have been delighted to be included in, in the squad of 30 in, uh, in the NRL squad. Fast forward and we see we get a couple of injuries, but a, a good mate of yours, Sammy Vettles, fellow, fellow Northern Beaches boy, did you really think at the start of the year you would have got your opportunity this early in your career in first grade? Obviously, that was my goal to try play first grade this year, but I definitely knew there was two quality number nines in front of me with friend and Sammy. To get that chance was, was really cool. Obviously, it's unfortunate for Sam what's happened this year, but um, I'm also very happy to get my jersey presented to me, which was good. And just on the likes of, you just touched on it briefly, but a player like Jake Friend has done everything possible at our club. What's he taught you and how has he improved your game? Obviously, all pre-season, he's a very good trainer and just his mentality of just hard work and that's what we try to build our games off at the Roosters is hard work. That's what I sort of want to try base my game off as well, my defence. But yeah, he's, he's a quality, quality, quality player, uh, Friendy. Finally, Freddie, what did Coach Robinson say to you, uh, you know, in your first run-on game last week, grand final replay, Sunnyville returning, Jay Moz's 300th. There's a lot to like about that game and a lot of milestones. For a young man like you who's really starting to, uh, you know, apply his craft, what were the words of encouragement or the instructions from Coach Robinson before you ran out? He trusts me a lot. Obviously, he came to me during the week and said, um, friend's going to be out this week, so we're going to be starting you. And he goes, we've got a lot of trust in you, all the players do. 
probably helped in the sake that obviously all the hype behind Sunny Bill during the week and then obviously J Moz's 300 sort of took a bit of pressure off me. But um, yeah, it was a massive task ahead. And then actually during half time, I'm obviously sitting down and Robbo walks in and he was laughing at me because he knew I was, I was sucking in the big ones there at half time. But, um, yeah. but yeah, he was really happy for me. Freddie, away from football, you said you don't mind popping down for a swim, but I know I, I see on Instagram, mate, you, you don't mind a, a game of golf. Away from footy, what are you doing? Are you studying or anything else like that? Um, yeah, obviously, a bit of downtime is always good. Try and get away from footy. I, I do enjoy my golf, although I'm not very good at it, but I uh, try to think think I am. But yeah, I am doing um, studying just my personal training course at the moment, but obviously footy is pretty full on, so I'm just trying to nail down on that at the moment. We're so pleased to have you on Roosters Radio. We appreciate your time. You know, we're buoyed by the fact that just adding to our great young Roosters and, uh, mate, long live your success and your form and uh, all the best in the coming weeks. Cheers. Thanks, boys. You can go use that driver now, mate. See you later. (laughs) Too easy. (laughs) Bye, mates. Bush, what what a great young man and uh, it's great to see some of our younger players getting an opportunity in first grade. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, it comes off the back of injury and, uh, you know, as he said, it's it's not, not something good, but everyone takes their opportunity with both hands. What I love, Silky, is the type of stability that he brings and the type of, uh, you know, mentality. And it comes from the confidence that Coach Robinson gives in his players and the belief. And I loved him saying that, what Robbo said to him before the game, we believe in you, your colleagues yeah. believe in you, your fellow players believe in you. That must be amazing for a 19-year-old man to look around who he's playing with. I mean, you know, there's going to be a time he looks back on his career so he can go, I, I played with those guys. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And uh, as he said in the interview there, you know, he would have got a pretty tough upbringing there on the Northern Beaches having to tackle uh, Big Darcy and Joey, no doubt. So uh, we proved that on the weekend uh, with that massive 66 tackle count. Well, I'm glad he said he didn't fight back. We've seen his brother throw him. Yeah, uh, yeah, it goes all right on Darcy. Yeah, maybe he's got the family jewels of those boxing hands, but who knows. But it's just great to see a young man bringing stability to the club and be able to step into the shoes of, you know, someone who we just absolutely love on Roosters Radio and Jake Friend, and I think he made a really good account of himself. Well, you're on Roosters Radio, and we're going to be back right after this. Welcome back to Roosters Radio. And here at Roosters Radio, we love to celebrate the milestones. And there was a milestone reported in the papers there last Sunday. It was reported that the Roosters have acquired $5 million worth of sponsorship across their entire kit. And the man who spearheaded that is Jared Johnson, our COO. Jared, welcome back to Roosters Radio. Take it away, Bush. Well, Jared, uh, firstly, congratulations, mate. I know you're uh, not one for for trophies and accolades yourself, but, mate, strong leadership. In the back office is, uh, you know, Jack Gibson's mantra. And it's a really big achievement for yourself and, of course, uh, the whole entire commercial team to be able to uh, fill our jumper full of great sponsorship. But, uh, mate, how does it feel? And can you talk us a little bit through it? Thanks, mate. Uh, no, it's good. Thanks for having me on tonight. Um, no, it's really pleasing. I think the most important thing is that it's a really tough environment out there in the sporting partnership landscape. And, uh, you know, I think what we're most proud about is the is the partners that we have on board, not just the jersey, but our our full playing apparel and, and the longevity that we've had those partners for. So that's that's what we're most proud of. And then then secondly, the the team behind it, the, the Roosters have all have all contributed to that. So I'm I'm really proud of the of the staff group that we have. I'm I'm really pleased about the buy-in that we get from from our board and 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 Trent with their support and, and activations because it's it's not just about you know, their logo on a certain position of the of the jersey. It's it's the further leveraging of that partnership and and the the milestones that they're looking to to uh, achieve in that partnership. So that's what I'm most uh, most pleased about. And and like I said, in a, in a really tough environment to know that uh, we've got a great staffing group, uh, the Roosters that um, have done a fantastic job for our club. Now, now, JJ, you touched on something there when you talked about the longevity of some of our partnerships, and it, it got me thinking about some of the great stuff that some of the other sponsors do, namely the business networking, albeit we haven't had an opportunity to do it this year due to COVID, but there is some great opportunities for smaller businesses to get involved in the club. Most definitely. So it's, yeah, exactly like you just said. It's it's not always about being on the jersey or or signage at, at the at the ground. Listen to Pat last week, who was great on the show, and and talking about our player sponsor group, and and that's been a great uh, a great avenue for for partners to to become involved. And then at the start of the year, as you touched on, because we we did talk to to you guys about it, and and the the network was creating our our Roosters Business Club because we do get a lot of inquiries or, or introductions from people that you know I, I met this person, they're a big Roosters fan or I met this person who's got a business you know here or there and they'd really like to be able to network with 
the partners that the Roosters have, what what do you have for them? So we created a business club at the start of the year. It was actually going really well. And, you know, like everything uh, pre-COVID, you know, we were, we were a month away from our, our first event and our launch night. And, uh, you know, of course, it just wasn't appropriate to continue. So we're looking forward to hopefully some form of normality returning in, in 2021. And, and we'll relaunch that program. With, like you said, it's a great way for, for those who haven't, um, you know, done either a, a, a partnership before with a sporting club, but just a way to, to uh, engage and network away from the football field. Yeah, well, JJ, I'll tell you another great way to uh, engage away from the football field, and I know that there's a couple of people filling some tables. This week's Newcastle Knights game, home game for the Roosters, SCG, hosted by uh, the great Cooper Silk and yours truly. And uh, the, the team from Roosters Radio really enjoy getting down to the captain's club. Can you talk our Roosters Radio fans through how they can get uh, a table at the Captain's Club or how they get in touch. Yeah, well, we're all sold out for uh, Saturday night versus the Knights, Bush, so best to get in uh, early with the corporate team for the following week versus the Sharks. But it is a great room, as you touched on, and you guys do a fabulous job in hosting it. So uh, Saturday night's going to be a cracker, isn't it? The Knights are, uh, are in good form. Obviously, we had a really good win Saturday night down in down in Canberra. I thought uh, I thought we looked really good. So uh, I think it's all starting to build up, three rounds to go, and uh, and we're into the into the, the serious stuff. And, JJ, just finally, mate, to bring it home for our fans, it's always an insight. Everyone likes to get a little bit of the insight into uh, what goes on at Roosters HQ. Sonny Bill, I mean, it's a huge acquisition from a playing point of view. He, he really made a great account of himself last week. How much does the commercial team have to turn their attention towards something like, you know, Sonny Bill coming on? We had Jay Moss's 300. There's so much, so many milestones. How much work goes into all that? Heaps of work goes into it, and unfortunately, during this uh, this time of COVID, the the reward isn't you know overly strong. I think if we were non-COVID times, I think we'd be talking about a crowd of you know twenty thousand plus on Saturday night. But you know we, we know the Knights have fantastic support, and, and obviously, uh, Sonny's first turnout, his, his return turnout, I should say, since 2013-14. So there's no doubt Saturday night would have been something quite big in terms of Sonny's arrival. You know, back at the club, I, I wasn't at the club in 13-14, so he didn't have the, the pleasure of uh you know being around sunny or getting to work with sunny but yeah real real gentleman and certainly is all the things everyone says there's that uh, that aura about him but he's a really uh, really humble man and, and certainly here for the right reasons and, and wanting to represent the roosters really well and of course jared before we let you go also congratulations on the re-signing of steggles uh, our premium partner uh, for a couple more years you must be delighted yeah we really are you couldn't ask for a more loyal partner than uh, than steggles fantastic uh, support from the whole organisation. It might sound, you know, a little bit corny and cliche for the listeners, but yeah, you would not get a, a more loyal partner, um, fa- fabulous family in the Camilleri family who it's become more than just, you know, being on the jersey. It's, it's a real friendship with the club. The regard that they're held within around the club is really high. Yeah, so we, we, we couldn't be, be prouder. Yeah, and I think also, too, just to touch on it, like the last two times Steggles have, have extended and renewed, A, they've extended early, which is a fantastic sign of faith, and they've also extended early when times are challenging. So, you know, there's no doubt whilst the team's playing really well on the field, the, the COVID period is, is certainly challenging. And then the last time that they extended was at the back end of 2016, which obviously wasn't a great on-field result for the club. So in terms of loyalty and 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 dicking fat with you, there's there's no one better than Steggles. They're, they've been phenomenal. And they're not just, I guess, what they've also done for the Roosters, but the Steggles charity nest has cracked over $4 million this year, which is a phenomenal achievement. So that money goes directly to, to charities, Children's Cancer Institute, Brisbane Children's Hospital, you know, it's it's a fantastic effort by by them to raise that. So every time the Roosters uh, win and win, for every point we win by, uh, Steggles kick in a thousand bucks. So it, there's been some games this year and in the past where it hasn't been a cheap cut out for the family, I can tell you. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Well, mate, we're all Steglers for a Sunday roast and uh, congratulations. Thank you so much for uh, spending time with us again on Roosters Radio. I appreciate it, boys. And as we say, East to win. East to win. <laughs> Have a great night. Thanks, mate. Welcome back to Roosters Radio. And Saturday night, 7.35 kickoff, this mouthwatering game, Roosters v. the Knights. Of course, former coach Adam O'Brien there at the helm. It's a mouthwatering contest. How do you see it? Yeah, well, look, I just want to um, give a shout-out to Chad Townsend for uh, softening up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Caelan Ponga there and uh, on the weekend, and thank you, Chad. You didn't quite hit the brief. But uh, no, mate, it'll be a tough game. Mitchell Pearce against his own club. We saw how much he reveled in, in playing against him. He kissed his Aiden jersey. Guerra's well. back. They, they've hit some form the Knights. I think the coach 
really, uh, you know, gave them a spray two weeks ago. They had a loss, and then last week they performed well. Just don't know. I think the Roosters have turned the corner of that finals-type football they play, and I think Coach Robertson has a measured at a certain point, and I think they've hit their target, and I think I'm looking forward to Roosters. I'm going to tell you, Silky, 32, Knights 16. 32-16. Well, the Bar Cummings of Rugby League, as I like to call him, Trent Robinson, just getting our team cherry ripe at the right time of the year. I see our boys putting another score on. I'm seeing us win quite convincing. I'm going to say Roosters 40 to the Knights 10. Wow. We're not bad. We're not too far apart. Yeah, we're not too far. But uh, I think, our, as you rightfully say, I think um, we're, we're coming into finals time. We can report that the players that took the field for the Roosters, all 17, have uh, turned up all right. So while uh, there may be a few changes in and around uh, the hooking role, but regardless of that, I think our boys will be right and ready to play there on Saturday night. And uh, looking forward to hosting up at the Captain's Club. If you want to take your team, your staff, motivate them, uh, reward them for hitting their own targets, get up to the Captain's Club. Silky and I host it. And it's a great way to watch a footy. little food on the way and, uh, you know, a few drinks, Silky, just to enjoy the football. Absolutely. Well, that's it for this episode of Roosters Radio. We'd like to thank our special guests, Freddie Lussick, Jared Johnson. You've been listening to Roosters Roosters Radio, East East to win. win.